And the main question, will it start? With uh, at least four cars, we're going to participate on one international drift championship this year. In our opinion, saving money on it is unacceptable. Our idea was to create a reliable setup that uh, can be used for the real world competitions. We really want to build the best drift race car in the world. Fresh X. How do you think was this first start? Great. There were some nuances, tuning related and adjustment related, the kind that are always present during a first startup. But overall, everything went great. It was the first start, right? Yes, but we need to adjust a few settings. And for now, we're reinforcing something, right? We need to make sure that the actual ignition angle matches the one we see in the software that the ignition timing corresponds to the cam phasing. And that's it. After that, tuning. For this car, we are still waiting for a couple of important parts. We've been waiting for a very long time already. In fact, we already had them, but we're making another pulley for the supercharger. And the one they made didn't have the allowance it was supposed to have. So that part needs to be remade. And we already waited like three weeks for it. As soon as we started this engine, we understood that it's working kind of incorrectly with the operations. And after checking the obvious things and parameters, we decided to do the leak test. And that's when we discovered the massive, the massive leak. I mean, 40%, it's kind of 10 times more than the normal parameter. And uh, of course, it means that the engine is not working and it's not uh, assembled properly and we can't use it, of course, uh, for the start. So the only way right now is uh, to disassemble and rebuild the engine before just one week before the first start. I'm bending parts for the front fan shrouds. Basically, the trick here is that some angles are bent upwards and some are bent downwards. When it's bent upwards, you don't need to mirror the blueprint to the other side, and that makes it convenient to do. Is it for these Pro-Z or Nailas? No, those are already assembled. We already have those ready. This is for future projects. And for this project, which status do we have now? Yesterday, we started the engine. It's not that bad. And how it was? Tell me. Well, there are nuances, of course. There are things to finish, things to fine tune, so to speak. Today, we already fixed a lot, eliminated yesterday's issues, let's say. Possibly, there will be a second attempt soon. How do you think we, at which quantity of cars will we make to the next championship? Well, one will be ready. That's my personal expectation. I'm very anxious and I worry about deadlines as well. And I honestly have no idea how we'll make it because there are two weeks left and we... And what do we have here? The cars are assembled. Ideally, we need to install the body kit. And I think I'll start that process soon. But we also need to tune everything, fit everything properly so it all works and works correctly. And before Odyssey? Yes, I think we'll make it. At least these two for sure. The issue is that the engine for the third car is still on the way, and that also needs to be assembled, finalized, and so on. So maybe not for the first round, but for the second or the third. As soon as we see the chassis, as soon as it arrives, we'll immediately start working on it. Pull it together. We already have finished components, including the rear subframe assembled with the differential. So it basically just needs to be installed. Essentially, we just need to put everything together. Tell me, what do you have here? This is our welding shop. At the moment, we're welding aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium. 
This is an intake pipe with welded threads for sensors and for the blow-off valve for the LS engine, which, by the way, started yesterday. Tell me about the engine start. I liked it, honestly. I really enjoyed that the initial forecast I had in my head actually came true. I had a plan from the beginning and I stuck to it. And you were responsible for? I was responsible for all these pipes, basically. Essentially, I'm responsible for the voice of our car. Yesterday you said that it sounds not like V8. Yes. What's the difference? First of all, I played around a bit with the exhaust configuration, and that has a huge effect on the result. Circuit number one, circuit number two. Here we have a window that connects the two circuits, kind of magically plays with the sound a little. And over there at the end, the volume is dampened. Also, because we're using a non-typical manifold for a V8, a log manifold, there are factory solutions, of course. But since this is tuning, factory solutions never really fit our needs. Because here we have large cross sections for big gas volumes and very limited space, which is a very important nuance. The so-called log manifold, not a 4-1, not a 4-2-1 collector. And yesterday it showed itself in a very interesting way. And it sounds very interesting. Paired with the X-pipe, I really liked it. Remember, for example, Nasser's exhaust, or just any typical V8? Yeah, it sounds super loud, like BMW. Yes. In our case, there's this small, thin note, you know, kind of a European exhaust character. I didn't know how the log manifold would work, this log-style collector. I assumed based on my experience, but I needed to confirm my theory. That was the first thing, and I confirmed it. And thanks to the X-pipe, I made a kind of whistle. I removed the depth of the car's voice, so to speak, added a bit of high notes, reduced the volume slightly. And because of that, we ended up with this rich, beautiful sound. We have uh, just a month or even less than a month before the OADC. Uh, what are the forecasts for the readiness of the car, or at least at your part? I'm flying out the day after tomorrow already. So all is ready? Yes. Everything will be ready today. We'll finish this task now and then start installing the brake pads so that the car can do what? Brake. Exactly. But first of all, we need this in order to bleed the braking system. Inside the brake system circuit, there is brake fluid. It's a fully sealed system, so we need to fill the entire system with fluid and remove all the excess air. That's called bleeding the brakes. What are you doing here right now? Right now, I'm installing the bash bar, and then I'll slowly start installing the body kit. What do you like most of being a mechanic? In general, the process of communicating with cars is quite interesting. Every car has its own character. I'm sure that right now we have three cars in the garage, and each one has its own character, its own mood. What's the difference of the Viper Fest 58 and LS engine for you? In general, I've worked with American engines for quite a long time, and V8s are closer to me. The sound is different. The power is distributed differently. Overall, they're very different engines. So you like more to work with the current ones? Yes, of course. I haven't worked much with the S58 because when I joined the company, it was already built and in use. So I didn't work with it that much. But during service, during and after testing, it's quite an interesting car, but these will be louder. Okay, now it's kind of understandable what's going on with the mechanical part, and we're moving to the next one, to the body kit, because it turned out that we're using not the same setup for all three cars for this championship. What are the results of building this car? Great. 
what are you doing? Installing the body kit, preparing the car for vinyl wrapping, team livery. You did something in fine tuning for the suspension for the mirror, for individual setup, right? Individually, we tried different front toe settings during practice. We made some conclusions for ourselves, what we liked and what we didn't. Are we ready for Leva? For this car, about 95%. Wrapping is left and some small things. Installing the dashboard, but that's nothing major. In which setup will we make to come to Oman? Let's say I'll still manage to finish Den's car. Yeah, and a second. The second one is Anatoly's. And how it's going? I think it's not doing very well. We didn't make it. Well, look, since that car is being assembled now, I'll have to fit this body kit on this car. And this same car will have to be driven, transported, and wrapped with the livery. One of the body kit will be FRP. Yes. So one uh, carbon, one carbon kevlar, and one FRP. Yes. It's quite a range. Yes, quite a variety. So this body kit will later need to be transferred to Anatoly's car. So how it's all going? Everything is great. We're working, we're producing. There are some minor issues from time to time, like today when the right heater fan broke. We were forced to stop post-curing the parts. Luckily, there weren't many parts there. So what we have here, it is the ready body kit for carbon. Yes, a fully carbon one. Stylish, 100%. We're going to race without a diffuser. These rear bumper ailerons are mounted to the diffuser because the diffuser sticks out a bit like this. So Evgeny will still think about something regarding the rear bumper aileron mounts. So did you make it? All body kits? We would have made the third carbon body kit if we were just going to Oman. But since we're going to Liwa on the 27th, we won't make the third carbon body kit. So we're coming to Liwa with three cars. And Oman? Then? Oman as well, three cars, but we won't be swapping body kits anymore. Carbon we wouldn't install. No. Coming back to this engine, how actually we fixed this issue. Uh, we decided to do and run uh, massive uh, alternative tests and uh, we discovered the uh, ignition test. So uh, the point is that it was the misplaced uh, trigger pattern that it's not matching perfectly the LS one and uh, it provokes and causes the misfire uh, when uh, the fuel ignites uh, not correctly and uh, provoke the uneven run of the engine. So we just, uh, long story short, really what we, did we do? We calibrated it manually then we decided to use the different tool to check if it works or not and it showed around three or four percent of the leakage which is actually perfect for the racing car so uh, hopefully hopefully nothing is uh, lost and we continue to set up this engine because it really works the issue was with the tool but not with the assembly of the engine And what is looking here? The gaskets we installed don't fit our engine, so now we'll have to use the most reliable method, apparently sealant. How did you check the angles? Everything I measured was off by two tenths. Metal has a tendency to spring back, to unbend. I checked all the angles, so it must be more than that. Where's the specification? Let's check, let's verify. All right, let's see. 31 degrees, let's go. One, two, three. Something doesn't match. What angle do we have here? 25.5 degrees instead of 31. Next, 70 degrees, doesn't fit. It's okay, it happens. Production is a human factor, so to speak. People learn. 
but I measured everything with an angle gauge. Did you use one or two? That's the problem. When you finish bending it using this square, aluminum and any metal tends to spring back. So in this case, you need to overbend it. Get to work, brothers. And another day in our workshop came to an end. It was kind of funny, it was kind of stressful. We hope, guys, that you enjoyed this video too, this format too, because it's like the new update for us. And let us know in comments what you think about this vlog format, because uh, you may like it, you may don't like it, so push the like or dislike or write the comments. Uh, we'll be really interested and enjoy it with the, your opinion, because anyway, we're doing it for you. Don't forget to subscribe, because it helps us to grow, to make new videos on this channel. And we'll see you there at FreshX at the new videos.